Good morning. I'm Mike Bartlett, Professor Emeritus of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Western and a recent graduate of Western's Master of Arts in Public History program. I'd like to start by warmly acknowledging my co-author, Bill Turkell, who's professor of history at, who is a professor of history at Western and a digital historian. This morning, we're presenting preliminary work on digital analysis of historic bridges. Bill does the digital analysis and I'm the historic bridges. This morning, we will briefly describe a database of historic bridge images that we've put together, cataloged and collected. We'll describe machine vision image processing to identify the presence of a bridge in the image, its structural form, and potentially its age. And then we'll pre present a summary and some conclusions. The database of historic bridge images that we've assembled uh, contains 4,800 4, Canadian and American bridge images. The bridges date from 1865 to 2019. This photo is of the anchor span of the Sawicki Bridge over the Ohio River constructed in 1911. Many of the images are of bridges that are on the American National Register of Historic Places. And the images are collected from Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons, and the Historic American Engineering Record, H-A-E-R. Each bridge is classified using a bridge identification number, using a Wikidata identification number that links the record to open data sources, the bridge location, city, town, and county, state or province in Canada and country are noted. The year of construction is uh, categorized. The GPS latitude and longitude is known. The main span type is given an identification number, which we'll talk about more in a moment. And the approach span is classified as one of seven alternate approach spans or null for a bridge that doesn't have an approach span. This is the Eagle Point Bridge at Dubuque, Iowa, for example, constructed in 1902. Uh, the main spans are in the background towards the right of the uh, photograph. They're steel through trusses, called through trusses because the roadway actually passes through the truss. The approach span, the left foreground of the photograph, is a Pratt deck truss. It's called a deck truss because the truss is entirely, entirely beneath the roadway. This is too busy a slide, I'm sorry, but it describes the different main span uh, classifications and subclassifications that go with each main span type. So a cable stayed bridge, for example, can have a concrete or a steel superstructure. The bascule, lift, and swing bridges are for bridges that are movable and can open to allow passage of an overheight vessel, uh, typically underneath. Altogether, we have 60 unique classifications of main span and subspan together uh, that we identify the main spans with. The images are also defined in the database using a separate uh, field table of fields. So each image is given a photo ident identification number and the identification number of the bridge that the photo is a photo of. Uh, if there are image restrictions on the images, uh, then that's noted, either they're public domain or restricted images. And the source URLs for the images are given so that we can go back and review uh, the original images online if necessary. Uh, this uh, lovely open span, uh, open spandrel uh, deck arch uh, is an H-A-E-R image and so it's in the public domain. This is Bill's block diagram showing the computational analysis which is similar to the one that he used previously to analyze image, images describing the history of electronics. First is an, an image is obtained 
either from a database or using a web spider. The image is scanned using a neural network trained to detect bridges. If no bridge is detected, then the image is discarded. If a bridge image is detected, then the image may be processed and quality measurements obtained. And then further processing is carried out to classify the span type, to estimate the camera location, to estimate the date of construction, to recognize structural components, and so on. Here's an example of bridge detection using the AdamX app model A1 neural net, which has been pre-trained with the ADE 20K database of more than 20,000 images. This is a challenging image uh, to detect bridges in because there are two here. This is the St. Lawrence River at Quebec with the Pierre Laporte suspension bridge in the foreground and the historic Quebec bridge, a steel cantilever in the background. Here you can see that the software has successfully identified the sky, tree, earth, building, water, sea, river, and plant components of this picture. And it's also done quite a good job successfully identifying what in the image are actually bridges. Here's an example of the artificial intelligence classifier uh, being used to determine the main span type. The AI was trained using 80 images of through trusses, uh, such as this elegant 1889 lenticular through truss in Lycoming County in Pennsylvania, and 80 images of girder bridges, such as this 1940 Edison Bridge in Sayreville, New, uh, New Jersey. Then it classified 168 new images as either through truss bridges or girder bridges. This is a screenshot from Mathematica that shows that the accuracy was pretty good, almost 92% correctly identified. And this is confirmed by the confusion matrix plot. Bill extended the analysis to train Mathematica to identify five different types of main spans, cantilevers, deck arches, girders, through arches, and through trusses. And as you can see, the accuracy wasn't quite so good this time, only about 69%. You can see that there were uh, no uh, uh, girders that were predicted to be through trusses, which is understandable because the forms are quite different. There were, however, cantilevers classified as deck arches and deck arches classified as cantilevers. In this case, one might actually have some sympathy for the computer. Here is an example of a cantilever, for example. This is the 1932 French King Bridge in Massachusetts. And here's a deck arch, the Gervais Creek Bridge in South Carolina. And you can see that the cantilever bridge has diagonals in the arches. And you can see that the verticals over the piers in the deck arch are heavier than they are in the cantilever. But from a distance, these bridges don't actually look all that different. Doreen came into my office when I was working on this slide, read the title and wondered what the heck I was gonna be doing in Vienna anyway. So there are challenges with determining the date of a bridge. The biggest one is that time is a continuum. You need to be able to identify shades of gray between black and white. Some bridge types haven't evolved very much. For example, wooden co uh, covered bridges, and we have 377 of those in the database, haven't changed appreciably for more than a century. People are nostalgic about traditional forms and build new bridges to look like those original structures. The steel tr Pratt truss uh, has been around for a century and has been optimized for almost that long. So that while construction details may differ based on the bridge's age, the general propor proportioning and member mass massing does not. Another challenge is that technological progress varies across geographical regions. 
and it varies differently for different bridge types across geographical regions. Again, I'm sorry, this is a busy slide. But some of the trends that we might expect to see are, for example, steel replacing wrought iron and cast iron construction around 1890. The details of a wrought iron structure and a steel structure look similar, but the underlying material is, difficult, is different. Um, we might expect the uh, emergence of pre-stressed concrete construction in the 1950s to uh, yield more slender pre-stressed uh, bridges than reinforced concrete bridges. And we might expect to see a transition in the 1980s where cable stayed bridges are replacing cantilever trusses. Within a particular classification of main span type, artificial intelligence may be able to date the bridge from different construction details. For example, this is the 1891 Harvard Bridge in Boston across the Charles River. One end is at MIT. These variable depth plate girders are riveted together. The, the bridge was replaced in the 1980s and although the variable depth plate girders were maintained, they're now welded, not riveted together. Advances in computer technology have allowed much more complicated structures to be built. For example, uh, this is particularly evident in cable state bridges. For example, this is the 1973 John O'Connell Bridge at Sitka, Alaska, one of the first cable state bridges designed and erected in the United States. There are a total of eight cables in the two cable planes <clears throat> and the bridge is statically indeterminate to the fourth degree. In other words, you would need to come up with four equations of deflection compatibility to uh, add to the equations of equilibrium to analyze the structure. This is the 2012 Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge in Dallas, Texas, designed by Santiago Calatrava. It has 58 uh, cables in arranged in surfaces that actually form hyperbolic paraboloids. The degree of indeterminacy is beyond manual simple calculation. It, you, need, you need a computer, a powerful three-dimensional analysis program to determine that this structure can successfully resist the loads that it's subjected to. So where are we with this initiative? Well, the current project is a work in progress but we have cataloged uh, a database of 4,800 images and have used preliminary artificial intelligence techniques to identify bridges in the images and to classify bridges by type. Thank you for your patience. I'll now try with Bill's assistance to answer any questions you may have.